Gary, uh, before we get into questioning, I just want to point out, um, as I look around, there was a reason why we wanted to have this hearing here at the 9-11 Museum, and we wanted to make sure that those who visited this hallowed ground could be part of this. And as we look around, we see people visiting the 9-11 Museum. And I just want to point out to all of you here, whether you are proud New Yorkers or whether you're visiting from any corner across this nation. Many days you may watch the mainstream media and see a very divided government. Division in Washington, division amongst parties. I just want to be very clear that on this day as you have members of the United States House of Representatives from many corners of this great nation, representing both sides of the aisle. But this morning, we are not Democrats or Republicans. We are here as Americans. And this is your government at work. And we are united, not divided, united in funding innovation and education and equipment, fighting for the health care of 9-11 survivors, and most importantly, keeping us and our first responders safe. Members will be recognized by order of seniority for their five minutes of questioning. An additional round of questioning may be called after all members have been recognized. I now recognize myself for five minutes. Deputy Commissioner Weiner, uh, you mentioned it briefly in your opening remarks, but I think if, uh, if you could perhaps give us two to three minutes, can you give us a sense, and I know that this was something that we discussed when we had met a few weeks ago, and I think for everyone to hear, especially my colleagues, is of super importance. Can you give us a sense of the threat that foreign terrorist groups pose today and how it has changed over the past 20 years? Absolutely. Thank you for the question. Uh, this is an enduring threat. It's a persistent threat. And as I mentioned, though it manifests differently today than it did on September 12, 2001, it's a threat that we have arrayed tremendous resources and need to continue to array tremendous resources to combat. Uh, Al-Qaeda and ISIS continue to inspire homegrown violent extremists across the country and here in our area of responsibility in New York uh, every day. This continues through propaganda. This continues through plotting. This continues through the investigations that we collectively, with our federal, state, and local counterparts across the country, carry out to make sure that it doesn't manifest in violence on our streets. Uh, this is in addition to threats posed by nation states. I mentioned Iran briefly earlier, but the emboldened Iran and activities uh, targeting dissidents here in our city, targeting former U.S. officials uh, in threat streams are of great concern to us at the NYPD and in concert with our federal partners. Uh, the nexus to international terrorism remains strong and it will continue to do so. Uh, the programs that we've just described are put into place to ensure that collectively we can meet threats where they emanate from before they materialize here on our streets. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. One of the things that Mr. Goldman mentioned in his opening remarks was about FEMA's nonprofit security grant program. Uh, Commissioner Ryder is charged with protecting one of the largest Jewish populations uh, in, across this nation, and I am honored to represent that same population. Uh, the Nonprofit Security Grant Program provides funding support for target hardening and other physical security enhancements and activities to nonprofit organizations that are at high risk of, terror, of a terrorist attack. In New York alone, anti-Semitic attacks have increased by 39% from 2021 to 2022, reaching a record high. Commissioner, have you observed the use of the nonprofit security grant program within Nassau County's large Jewish community? Yes, we have. So in Nassau County, we, we've been very fortunate that we reach out to all of our, our uh, schools, 
we have 56 school districts, 450 buildings. We have over 100 uh, uh, yeshivas that are out there and, and um, synagogues and houses of worship. Every one of them has received an assessment from the Nassau County Police Department. Our Homeland Security Office has done the security assessment with them. We've advanced their security as far as going, given the RAVE app, which is a response app that we use in Nassau County. It's in every one of our uh, institutions. And also the, the hardening of that security, uh, putting in the ballards, putting parking conditions, lighting, uh, anything that would make it a safer, the, the, as we call them, the person trap in the front of the building. So we've done a lot with our, our, um, our leaders, both from the religious side and the school side, but we always can do more and they can always use more funding. So do you believe that the, the nonprofit security grant program has been successful? It's, it's been invaluable, it really has. And it's sometimes not waiting for that, but that perception of security is so important to those people that go to pray on, on, the, on the Sabbath or on a Sunday or a Friday at a mosque. It's, it's in, they want to make sure that they feel secure when they go to pray. So the fact that we put these security measures in place is important, but the intelligence side is probably more, more important. So just to stick on that for one moment, in Nassau County, it has been successful because I think the lines of communication have been great and you have been at the forefront of making sure that it's implemented. What can we do as members of Congress from all walks of this country um, to make sure that local police departments as well as the larger ones um, have the same resources that, that you are utilizing in Nassau County? Well, supply and demand. Where, where is it needed the most? You know, it, look, nobody is a, is a bigger target than, than the New York City area, and we know that. And that's why we have five of their uh, detectives that sit in my intel center to share intelligence back and forth. But when it comes to the technology and the support of the public side, there's a foundation out there that has to start with, at home with the kids and stuff where we're starting to teach our children about anti-Semitism and hate. It doesn't, it's not spent enough time of building that foundation with them. Then they grow into those people that become those ta that, that want to target us. The more we spread that, that wealth throughout the country, it is important. But there's needs that are in some places a lot less than it would be in, like, again, like the greater New York City area. Thank you very much, Commissioner.